Hi guys, so in this video segment that I'm recording for the Amigos podcast and canvisualsheep.com, I want to talk about the ancient art of SCSI. SCSI was a, an interface that we used to connect hard drives, CD drives, DVD drives, peripherals, like scanners and printers, to our very old machines, our retro machines, our Macs, our Amigas, our Unix systems. Um, a lot of people these days, they don't understand or they don't, haven't even heard of SCSI. Uh, I went to a computer store, a local computer store, about a month, about a year ago, and there I asked the guy if he had a, Cent a Centronics cable to hook a CD drive up to an Amiga, and he had no idea what I was talking about. And at that point, another guy comes out from the from the back room, and he says, "Oh, like the hard drive?" And I was, like, "Yeah, like the hard drive." And it's like, "Sorry, we don't have anything of that age." So. It's, it's kind of an obscure technology nowadays. A lot of it has been replaced by um, Peter Seder. Um, it was even replaced on the Amiga with IDE. But um, so, needless to say, um, I want to take a step back and talk about how, uh, how we used to set up hard drives. So I want to talk on a really high level about how SCSI actually works. So starting with the adapter in your machine, um, devices they are chained together looping through one another until you get to the final device in the chain, uh, which has a terminator on it. Now, it's a common problem when you're setting up a system or you're adding new devices to, uh, to your system that the terminator is in the wrong position or is missing completely, uh, in which case your system will likely not even work. So in addition, to, uh, in addition to chaining those, each one of those devices has its own unique ID. How those IDs are set? It varies on the device that you're using. Um, so I have a Connor hard drive here, um, and there are no pins on this hard drive that allow you to set the, the ID. But what I do have is an adapter that will convert the 80 pin to a 50 or a 68, and it also has a series of pins down the side here. It has four sets, four pairs of pins, and through a combination of those pins, we're able to set the unique ID for this device. It also varies um, through vendors on the combination. No, you're going to have to eventually. You're going to have to look up uh, the schematics online for your device, and that can be hard since some of these, some of this hardware is 20, 30 years old. There's not a lot of documentation out there for them, so you're going to have to look up, find find the combination that's required to set the the desired ID for this device. Um, and really quickly, I have here another device that actually has the pins set on the on the drive itself. So it 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 can be uh, it can vary between hard drives. It can vary between CD drives. Um, but the important thing to to take away from this is chaining and unique IDs. Um, and just to illustrate the the chaining structure, um, I want to I want to show you the, my, the basic setup within my Amiga. Um, and without pulling it apart, I'm going to just draw a quick schematic of how um, how my system is set up. So I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the main board. And on this main board, I have a SCSI adapter here. It says the GPP uh, Combo 030 uh, SCSI board. And from this, I have I have an internal I have an internal adapter here. That goes down to a SCSI to uh, SCSI to SD card reader, and that's basically my hard drive in the system. And that's that has replaced my internal hard drive. And going out the back end, I have another little SCSI port, and using through a Centronics cable, I loop through into uh, CD0, my primary CD drive, and that is now going to loop into. Um, and an external hard drive that I'm going to use as a backup drive. This is going to be that little one gigabyte um, Connor drive that I picked up uh, a couple of weekends ago, and I'm just going to use that to as a backup for my uh, SD card here. Since SD cards they have a, a limited number of write cycles, um, I don't want to. I spend so much time setting up this machine, I don't want to lose everything. So I'm going to I'm going to be backing up my, my main system files into this hard drive. So it's a really simple setup. Um, and each, and as we mentioned before, each one of these devices has its own unique ID. I think over here on the on the main drive, I have a SCSI ID of five. 
Um, CD zero is two, and I'm going to set. I'm going to set this. I'm going to set the external drive as probably three. Right. Let's look at the the process of getting this drive working on the Amiga. So we've got the one gigabyte Connor drive uh, with the uh, SCSI, um, the SCSI adapter, the SEA adapter on the back there, and it's a little hard to see, but I've set the jumpers on the back to give it an idea of five. I downloaded some some very awesome ASCII art off the internet that gave us the, the pinouts and the schematics for this drive. I'm very lucky to find that. Um, right, let's power up. So when we're powering on SCSI devices, we always start with the, the last device in the chain, the one that's terminated, and work our way back towards the Amiga. So right now, on the the SD uh, floppy emulator, we're booting off. We're booting up our FastProp utility. Uh, if this was a normal SCSI adapter uh, made by Commodore, then we could probably just use the HD toolbox that came with Workbench. But since this is a GVP uh, custom combo board, we need to use GVP's own software um, from 1992. Uh, that has the utility of fast prep, and that'll do our setup and initialization of the drive. Okay, so we're in a, a very cut down version of an early workbench. I was really fortunate to find this utility on the internet as well. So I did, I've already actually initialized and set this drive up to work on the system. I want to make sure everything was working before I recorded this. Um, but we'll, I'll go through the process without actually putting you guys through the pain of uh, waiting for a low level format to complete. Now we're going to use the automatic uh, initialization, the automatic setup. So we'll take a look through a zero, there's nothing. Uh, zero is actually coincidentally uh, reserved for the SCSI boards within the machine. So we can't really put anything on zero, but we'll have a look at one, nothing on one. ID2, ID2, we actually see the CD-ROM drive that's coming up. And we'll jump to number six. And please do not format that. So number six is DH0. This is the hard drive that the machine is booting off that has Windows, uh, Windows, it has Workbench 3.1 installed on it. And this is our SCSI to SD adapter. So we don't want to do anything with that. So let's jump back to five, which should be the drive that we configured. We don't need to reinitialize it. And there we go. We see our Connor drive, just over a gig in size. Um, at this point, we could do a, a prep and format. Um, and we'll be presented with the options to install a bootable OS on this drive if we wanted to. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep this as a slave drive. And that's DH1 is the partition name. Now it's going to close out of that. I'm going to show you guys one other really quick thing that I found was kind of important. So I'm going to boot back into fast prep. And I'm going to go to the manual initialization. Skip through, and five. So here we notice our boot priority, this number here. Uh, so it's currently set to negative 20. This is a, this is a signed 8-bit integer, so it goes from minus 127 to 128. Uh, and each one of those integers is a, um, a boot position, uh, a boot priority position. And if we look over here at number six, we have minus 10, so that's going to be that's going to boot first, and then ID, then our hard drive, the the Connor one gig is going to boot second. Um, interestingly enough, the DH0, the floppy drive, which would typically be in here, is set to an ID of positive plus five. Um, so we really don't want to go above four, otherwise we would break the the system's boot um, default natural boot process. So let's quit out of that because we don't really need to do anything more there. 
But then let's jump over to our full version of Workbench. I'm going to put a blank disk in the floppy drive, virtually. And we're going to boot up and see if our drive is present under Workbench 3.1. Here's some activity, yep, here we go. And here we have it, we have DH0, still running perfectly. And we now have our backup drive in the event of a max write cycle failure on the SD card. So we can back up the system. And there we have it. So. I hope, uh, hope you guys have been able to find, get a bit of information from this and possibly work out some quirks that you might have encountered um, or just found it of great historical interest. Um, thanks for watching.